All right, so this UI you're seeing here is going to be my UI for the entirety of War Within, hopefully, but at the very least the first couple seasons until I figure out something better or I think it's fine. Now, it's worth noting that this is not, I did not make this UI. I'm not affiliated with anyone who made this UI. I'm just a user of it. And a lot of people have been asking what my UI is or going to be. And surprisingly, I thought that UIs like this were like a commonly known thing, but I guess not. So I'm going to show you how you get this UI who it's made by, what it includes, how to set it up. Now, it takes about three minutes to set up, give or take up 30 seconds, depending on your hard drive speed. And I'm pretty confident in saying if you were to try to set up a UI like this from scratch yourself, it would take you like maybe 10 hours. Now, what does this UI include? I've temporarily uninstalled every single add-on I've had besides what's included in the UI. So I can give you a proper demonstration of exactly what to expect. So what the UI includes is the weak ore is in the center, big wigs timers that will dynamically move depending on how much time is left until the mechanics, details profiles on the bottom right, Omni CD, so you have your interrupts that you can track, your utility, your movement things bottom right, the battle res is here in like the mid right section, as well as individuals, personal and group defensive cooldowns. Additionally, nameplates, I really like the way they look. I especially like that they tell you which one you have targeted with other arrows for which one you have mouse overed. If you haven't watched my settings video where I go over mouse overcast, mouse overcast is something I use 24 seven. So it's really important for me to know exactly which nameplate is being mouse overed at any given time. Wherever my cursor is, that determines what my target is gonna be for a spell when I press the keybind. Now, in addition to your regular weak auras, this also includes weak auras for raids and dungeons. Now, in what I'm showing right now on screen, this is one day before the War Within comes out, less than 24 hours actually. So I've uninstalled the old Dragonflight related weak auras. However, the War Within weak auras are installed in the UI. It's just that because we're not in a War Within dungeon right now, you can't really see it. A lot of the weak auras and the mechanics cues that are included with the add-on include sounds. And I'll let you listen to that for a second right now. And it's not just sounds for mechanics as you hear, it's also sounds for like, for example, whenever you receive PI or Innervate. And now I really like this because WoW can get very visually confusing and it's nice to take some stuff out of being visual. Now there still is gonna be a cooldown indicator if you do get PI or Innervate or a mechanics coming up, but it's nice to be able to have these auditory alerts to let you know that you need to look somewhere. So if you know where the bigwigs timers are, you know where your buffs timers are, you hear the noise, you can look there, see what you got, see how much time is left. I think that helps with keeping the UI clean and also making sure that you don't get alarm desensitivity where so many things are happening, so many noises are happening that you start ignoring all of it. Now it is worth noting too that these weak auras are made by pretty good players of each class and in the Discord that you will get this UI from. There's like a constant back and forth of feedback and the weak auras as well as the atom profiles are typically changed every few weeks to maybe every few days at the start. The nice thing about this UI though is to update it, you don't have to do any like super nerdy stuff. You just update it like you would an add-on and then when you load back into the game, it'll prompt you that there's an update and you install it and it's pretty great. And a final note of what's included with the add-on, two commonly used raid management add-ons, method raid tools and loot council are by default included. So if you join a raid that uses those, it's already here for you. It's already set up. There's already profiles and the notes already placed in the top left. So it's not going to be intersecting with anything weird in the UI. And before we go further, I wanted to answer a question that I think most people would have. How much of a performance hit is it to have a fully modified UI? Now I went into Brewkeeper, which I think is the boss available right now that had the worst FPS, especially as you did the fight incorrectly and dozens of ads started spawning. And I made sure to do this in LFR difficulty. So for sure the fight was done incorrectly. Now disclaimer, obviously I'm recording doing this. I have the video project open in the background and I'm watching a YouTube video on the other side of the screen while I'm queuing LFR. So don't look at the FPS number, just look at how it changes between add-ons versus no add-ons. And also I'm doing this cranked graphics to max at 4K. So this may be some of the lowest numbers that are physically possible. I tried to push it as hard as I can. Now, I actually thought this comparison would show you like 50 or 60 more FPS without default UI. Now keep in mind, my PC specs are as good as you can possibly have with an Intel Nvidia setup. Now looking at the side with no add-ons, the FPS wasn't as stable as I had actually hoped it would be for the base game. It would cap out in times of no mechanics, no damage going out at around 130 something. But for the most of the fight, it was bouncing around between 95 and like 115. And especially nearer to the end of the fight, it was more around the 110, 100 mark as we let more dragons spawn and more debuffs were going out. 
Now looking at the modded UI, instead of hanging out at the 110 mark without add-ons, it's hanging out in more about 195, 105, that area. I did see a dip as low as like 70s and 80s for a couple seconds. So the 1% lows are gonna be a lot lower if you have a fully modified UI. Now the moral of this very unscientific test is to expect about 10 to 15% FPS average off. I expect lower 1% lows, but not that much lower and not that frequently. Now, before I talk about changes I've made, and my overall thoughts about the UI, let me tell you how to get it first so you're not wasting your time. So the UI for me, and probably for you, is entirely free, sort of. So because it's a perk from being a Twitch subscriber and I have Amazon Prime, I can simply go to the creator of the UI Now's channel, subscribe, click the little checkbox that says to use my Prime sub, then go to Discord, connect my Twitch and my Discord, and then boom, I've spent nothing extra, and now I have access to the UI. And installing it is extremely simple. You go to this channel now UI, I install the fuller version and you click this full package button. It opens a GitHub link that is just a string of characters. You double click, copy the entire thing, go to wow up, go to the top right under my add-ons, click the three dots, click import, put this string in the import, press import. It installs every single add-on as well as the parent now UI add-on, which has the profiles for each one of these installed add-ons below. Then after all that's done, you launch the game. And if this window pop-up isn't here, or if it goes away, or if you close it, the command to open this back is slash NUI space install. And you wanna go through every single page and click the option in the middle that you want, and then click continue. The option in the middle, continue, you do this about 13 times. Then you click the finish button, it'll reload your UI. Now, if anything's missing or anything you see on my screen that you don't see on yours, make sure all the add-ons are enabled. When I had first installed the UI, the last time I had Omni CD installed, I had disabled it. So when I reinstalled Omni CD, that was disabled and I didn't have cooldowns for an entire dungeon here. So just make sure all the add-ons are enabled that you want. And then a really cool recent inclusion into like the technological development of UIs is that in the settings under add-ons now UI and the class week auras, any one of these buttons you click imports the week auras for that specific class. That way you don't have to go to Wago and hunt for strings and then have your entire game freeze while it's importing the string and decoding it. You can install the class that you want. And when you go to different character, you, you can go into options and pull the weak auras for that. That way also you can delete weak auras for the classes at will because you know that there's an easy place to get it back. Now this entire UI is built around the LVI profile and it's slash EC to open LVI setting. And then after you've done all the installation steps, the UI is pretty much ready to go for tanks and DPS. Now for healers, so what I do is I basically go to Omni CD and slash EC LVI and I make a new profile called healer and then I copy all the settings from the initial now profile. That way I can move things around for my healer. Like specifically all I did here was move the frames into a more centralized location. You can even have the frames beneath your screen, underneath all the weak auras, or like at the top for whatever reason or the right side, it doesn't matter. You can put it wherever you want. Now the best part of this UI package is keeping up with updates. Now, because the now UI add-on that has all the profiles is like an actual add-on showing up in wow up. Whenever they push updates to the UI, you will see an update for your add-on in wow up. You click update and then you go back into the game. You type slash NUI space install and then you click whichever add-on or weak aura or whatever had the update for and then you just rerun the install and it'll bring you up to date. Now, what do I think of the UI? Is it worth it? Well, so I have done keys up to like the 1% range. I have done every single mythic boss in the last expansion in a cutting edge guild and all the things I have done, I have never for a singular time felt like, wow, I am missing something crucial that matters in a certain moment. And now I have tried about a dozen of these like all in one add ons from different creators and different streamers and different YouTubers. This one is the one that I've settled on for about a year and a half now. And it's the one I'm going to keep using going forward. Now, in terms of is it worth it? Again, I don't pay anything for this. I have Twitch Prime. So basically a perk of Amazon Prime for me is having a full UI. Is the $5 worth it? I mean, that depends on you. Some people just hate the idea of paying anything, period. So maybe it's like a principal thing. Maybe it's like a value, five bucks isn't worth it. Completely up to you. I don't care which decision you make. I just wanna share what I use and give you more information through me explaining it than you would get if you were trying to redo the discords manually by yourself. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share what this add-on is, that it exists that it solves basically 99.9% .9 of the headache of making a UI yourself. And the fact that it's used by so many people at such a high end of the game 
means that it will be under great scrutiny for improvements and tweaks and optimizations throughout the expansion. All right, so now that I've showed you the UI and you know how it works, you know what it looks like, what it sounds like, I'm gonna show you the things I've changed. So the first thing I did when I installed the UI was I moved the action bars around so they're vertically stacked in the center. And I have a little bonus action bar near my chat for things like toys and teleports and buttons that aren't important enough to have their key binds, but they're important enough that I need to be able to click them whenever I want. Next, I went into LVUI options slash EC again, and in skins, I turned off Blizzard because I like the way default Blizzard skins look. I don't like this like dark monotone black square that it puts on everything. I think there's a time and place for the black square, but I don't like it being on my character screen, on the escape menu, everything like that. It's a little bit too much for me. And make sure you go to general action bars and this auto add new spells button, ensure that it's unchecked. If this is checked, whenever you learn a new ability spell or even like a zone spell or a quest spell, sometimes it will just throw it into a random open available slot in your action bars. And the way I use my action bars, they're invisible and I just look at the weak order to know what to press. So having my invisible action bars randomly change on me because Blizzard wants it to be that way, I don't really enjoy it. So this, this unchecking of auto add new spells I think is really, really important if you're using modified UI. Then I go uninstall some add-ons that I don't particularly use that much. But among the ones I remove include Twitch emotes. I don't wanna see the emotes in the game. It doesn't really matter to me. It also takes up a decent bit of memory. I'll also uninstall Raider.io because I use their client. I don't need that add-on installed by itself through Wow Up. And I'll uninstall Opi because I just don't like Opi at all. I'll uninstall my slot because I don't really get much functionality out of it. I don't change servers, characters, or accounts pretty much at all. So again, I don't need an add-on taking up any resource that I don't really use. And then I also take off World Quest Tracker just because I don't have a problem with the way that World Quests are displayed in the game. And I don't really need an add-on giving me a solution to a problem I don't have. Again, just takes up a necessary resource for me. Your usage may differ. And then one of the very last things I do is slash WA to open the weak auras menu. In the search bar, search externals and click on the externals dash defensive slash offensive one. Go to conditions and then change this sound to xylophone. I personally find xylophone whenever I get an external or a buff is much, much nicer than the default, which is this. Yeah, I don't really want a guy yelling bam at me at max volume, but the xylophone, I think is pretty pleasant. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not really much to change for the most part, it's up to whatever you want to add or remove, and the UI is segmented enough that adding or remove things doesn't really break much, if anything. Yeah, I just wanted to share this because the expansion drops tomorrow, and I know that there are people today and tomorrow and the day after, and probably for a while, that want a UI that's super heavily modded, nice, clean looking with all the information for higher end gameplay. But I also appreciate that making a UI like this yourself is way too much work, and it's way too difficult, and honestly, the base UI should be good enough that we don't have to do stuff like this. But but that's another reality that we don't currently live in. So yeah. If I think of any more changes or comments, I'll have that in the description. Uh, hopefully you like this UI. If not, that's cool too. That's it for now though. Later.